Okay, let us start recording. There is 17, 18, and 19. The answers are highlighted. Once again, I apologize for the slight flicker and hope that everyone can read that. If you need it explained, of course, I will also explain it to you. You may have done this one as 36 by 60. 36 inches by 60 inches. Of course, if you add up that perimeter, you will still get 192. Okay? Again, you must read the question because that is another question that they like on the provincial. Because the question is asking how many inches of frame must I buy? So the answer is 192. Choice A will probably be 36 by 60. Picking up what I'm putting down? Okay. Then they might even do the really mean thing and put a as choice D, both A and C are correct. A might be 36 by 60, C might be 192, and then they're both right. Okay? Now, this one often confuses people. If it's one inch thick, he's got to buy extra frame, doesn't he? Okay? Because the picture was 60 by 36, but he's got to go an inch out that way an inch out that way, an inch out that way, an inch out that way. Two, four, six, eight. He's got to add eight inches to his purchase. Everybody cool? That's why it's 200. Got it? Yeah. Sneaky, right? And finally, my living room is this rectangle measured in inches. Of course, would I ever measure my living room in inches? No, that's idiotic. I would measure it in feet and inches, maybe. Right? I would never measure it this way. This is a math question, not a real life question. Okay? Crown molding is sold for $379 for a linear foot. This question came off provincial. Why is it a bad question? If you don't know what crown molding is and you don't know what a linear foot is, can you answer this question very well? No. So it becomes an English question, doesn't it? Crown molding is the stuff that goes around the ceiling where the ceiling meets the wall. You guys know that stuff? You see it in houses all the time. We have it right there. That line of wood where the uh, two walls change, that would be called crown molding. Linear foot means you only count a line no matter how thick it is. Okay? So all that matters is how long the piece of molding is that you're going to put up. Everybody cool? So you needed to change this, these to feet, and then multiply by 3.79. That gets you your price. And then to get the taxes, you multiply by one point and then whatever your tax percentage is. And that gets you your answer there. Everybody cool with that? People need to see that one work through or is everyone okay? Work through that one? Okay. So I had 185 inches, but I need feet, yeah? So times one foot divided by 12 inches. The ones cancel. So 185 divided by 12. 185 divided by 12 is 15.42 feet, right? It's 15.4166666666. And then 240 divided by 12, that's an easy one, 20. So it's 20 feet, right? But there's four walls in the room, yeah? yeah. So I got to add those, multiply by 2 to get 70.8333 feet. Everyone good? Mm -hmm. Then I take that and I multiply by 3.79. Oops, woohoo. Two sixty-eight point four six, and then I multiply that by one point one two. Everybody good? All right. Uh, Twenty was my shed. I want to skip that one. I'll come back to it because I want to get the notes, the one page of notes done. Then I'm gonna let you guys work. Okay. Now I'm gonna change slightly what I said. I'm gonna quiz. We'll quiz on. 
Thursday. I like to do my tests and quizzes on Thursdays because it's the short block. Okay? So we will quiz on Thursday. So tomorrow, we'll go over anything from these notes and any worksheets I give you and any textbook work you get so you're ready for your quiz Thursday. Everyone okay with that? And then we'll quiz Thursday and carry on. All right? Okay. So if everybody could please turn to the page entitled Converting Between Systems, which should be your very next page. Yeah? Should begin with the bowling lane. Yeah? Okay. Now, if you were paying attention two days ago, four days ago, whenever the heck we talked about it, you remember that we set up a fraction to do conversions within systems, yes? Mm. What was that fraction? What you have times... Have times... What you want. What you want... Divided by... What you, what you don't, don't want. And where do you find this? In the question. It's in the data booklet. Because I do. Right? But I haven't given you guys your data booklet yet. You have. So, but I've given you the, the page that's important for it is in your notes. Right? That's where you have to go to find it. Now, I remind you, that is the only thing you get on your provincial. Anything else... Everything asked on the provincial, you can find the answers from that sheet. But sometimes the measurements aren't on that sheet. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For example, if I want to transfer milligrams to grams, that's not on there. That's where you got to remember, oh, milli, that means a thousand. Picking up what I'm putting down? So you got to be on the lookout for that. Okay. So you get this from your data booklet. That's where you find the fraction. And then you cancel, right? You cancel the units and you cancel the number one because that's always going to disappear. Everybody cool? All right. So if this will work with systems when we stay inside them, the beautiful thing about math is it always works. That's why math is actually less confusing than you want to think about it to be. Because rules are rules in math class. It's not like English. Okay? O-U-G-H in math class would only be oog. In English, it's 75 different sounds. But in math, it would be one because math has rules. Everybody with me? So if this worked before, do you think it will work now? Of course it will. And again, you will get to a point where you don't have to set it up. You won't have to write all this down. Most of you are probably already there. You're probably already seeing when you multiply and when you divide instead of writing it all down. And that's great. That's where I want you to get. But in my notes, of course, I'm going to write it out properly, right? Because that's the point. So my bowling lane is 19 meters long. What is that measurement to the nearest foot? So what do I have? Meters. So 19 meters times... I, what I want and what I don't want. So on my sheet, what do I want? I want feet, correct? And what I don't want is meters. Can I find on my sheet feet and meters? Right here. And what is it, Noah? 0 0.1, 0 0.3048. Right. One meter is 0 0.304, or one foot is 0 0.3048 meters, yes? It's right on our sheet. If you don't believe me, there it is. One foot is 30.48 centimeters. Or on your sheet, you guys have it as, if I'm not mistaken, 0 0.3048 meters. One data, your notes came from one year's data booklet. The other data booklet that I'm going to give you came from a different year's provincial. But they're the exact same thing, aren't they? Because meters to centimeters would just move that decimal for two places, yes? So, we go to our, where we're working. 19 meters. What I want is feet. So what I want is one foot. And what I don't want is meters, 0 0.3048. 
meters. The meters cancel, the one cancels, and I'm left with 19 divided by 0 0.3048. And I punch that in. Correct? And that, of course, will get me 19 divided by 0 0.3048. 62 and a bit, 62.3 feet. Now, since this question says approximately and to the nearest foot, that answer is going to be 62 feet. Is everybody cool? Nothing changes. It's exactly the same thing, except now your fractions aren't going to be in the same system. Otherwise, it stays the same. Hannah drove 62 miles. Farron drove 98 kilometers. Who drove further? Do I have to convert them both? No. If I convert one of them, am I good? Does it matter which one I convert? No. They both will work. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and convert Hannah because I read her name first. She drove 62 miles. What do I have? 62 miles. What do I want? Kilometers. So look on my sheet. What's the comparison? I need km over miles. 1.609 over 1. Yes? The 1 cancels. The meters, or the miles cancel. So it's 62 times 1.09, which is what? 99.75. Eight. 99.7. Oh, 90. Oh, oh. What are you doing to me, machine? You're making me angry. 99.758 kms. So who drove further? Because the question isn't how far she drove. What's the question? Who drove, Who drove further? So what's the answer? Hannah. Hannah. Now, if I had this on a provincial question, what would choice A be? 99.758. What would choice B be? Whatever 98K was in miles, in case you converted it that way. And then choice C would be Hannah and choice D would be Farron. You picking up what I'm putting down? That's what they'll do to you. And every chance I have, I will stop teaching and tell you a possible trick they could pull on you. So you start to get used to looking for them. Everybody cool? All right. So this is now easy, yes? It's exactly the same thing. Six feet, two inches tall. The list says he needs centimeters. Now, if any of you have gone, have any of you gone to get your learner's permit yet? You guys aren't six. Some of you could be 16 if you were born in January. Have any of you gone for your learners yet? When you go there, they will ask you your height and weight. You will tell them your height and weight in inches and feet and your weight in pounds. They have a little chart to convert for you. Well, Hannes might not. Would you give your height in feet and inches? You'd give it in meters? Yeah. Um, give it in kilometers. See how they figure that out. Yeah. How tall are you? Uh, 0 0.00175 kilometers. Uh. It's going to be like in that movie Zootopia where sloths work there. Have any of you seen the commercials yeah, for Zootopia? Yeah, yeah. That's going to be damn funny, man. I can't wait to see that movie. Um, anyway, sorry. Huh? Yeah, New Jungle Book's going to be wicked good. Except I don't know if they're going to actually have the songs. Yeah, I'm worried about it too. Because at the end of the trailer, they show them floating down the river on the bear's belly singing the bear necessities. I don't know if it's going to have the songs because I think you kids today are too jaded to want to sing the songs. But that's stupid because the songs in Jungle Book are so wicked awesome. Right? That King Louis, you know, Give Me the Secret of Man's Red Fire. That's a wicked song. But I bet that he isn't going to sing it. And Louis looks pretty damn scary in the new one. I think that's going to make people pee their pants. If you haven't seen the cartoon Jungle Book, see it. You're lame if you haven't. If you 
refuse to see it or you think you're too cool, don't, because you're not. Because the Jungle Book cartoon is wicked awesome. Don't go see the new one and say, oh, it's so much better. Just because it's real. Because it isn't. Okay? No human child is floating down the river on the belly of a bear. And I don't know about you, I haven't spent a lot of time in India, but I know a little bit about animals. And the last I checked, there were no bears that size in India. I'm pretty sure India is pretty small on the bear front. But I don't know. Have any of you guys been to India, seen a bear that size? I don't think so. But that's just me. Oh my God, did you guys see that thing on the news? The leopard that got free at the school? Yeah. The wild leopard? Some school in some place where there's leopards in real, in real life, not like zoo leopards. The leopard came down out of the woods to the school and was like running around the school. It was wicked. Because leopards are, of course, big cats. And if any of you have ever tried to catch your house cat when it doesn't want to be caught, it is difficult. Try it with a leopard. Magnus? Yeah, yeah, I was jumping all over everything like a little kitten. It was so funny. I was like, well, you know, maybe next time don't build the school in a leopard colony. (laughs) But no, humans would rather blame the animal. Now, heaven forbid somebody were to come to your house and build their house in your backyard. What would you do? If you were American, you would shoot them. And everybody would be like, oh, that's okay. But we have no problem. Oh, there's 60 leopards living in this forest right here. Let's build a school. Because that's a good idea. Hmm. Anyway, this is my little conservation lecture for the day. Let's build a school where there's leopards, where the humans are the weakest humans you can have, little children, and then wonder why the leopards go crazy. Just saying. So back to my good friend Alex, who's six feet two inches tall. He has to do his measurement in centimeters, correct? So how are you going to do that? Because this is feet and inches. And if you look on your data sheet, there is no comparison of feet and inches to centimeters, is there? Well, there's inches. But there's inches to centimeters. So if I take this and I turn it to inches, can I then do it? Picking up what I'm putting down? So first I got to do 6 times 12 and then I got to add the 2 inches to get 74 inches, correct? Yeah. And once I have 74 inches, then I can convert to centimeters, right? Now the question says I have to do it in centimeters. So I'm going to do that. What do I want? Centimeters, which is 2.54 over 1. So it's 74 times 2.54, which is whatever it is. 183, 76 times 2.54, backspace 2.54, oh not 76, dummy, 74 times 2.54, 187, so 187, now 24 25ths, that's almost 188, yeah? And what does the question say? Nearest foot, right? Or nearest centimeter? So it's 188 centimeters. Everybody cool? Okay. Now this is one of my favorite questions. Because every year on the news, I see some idiot that has driven his truck under an overpass and gotten stuck. (laughs) Happens all the time. I don't know why. If I were driving a truck down the highway that was tall, I would be carefuler. I know this because I have scraped my surfboards on the roof of underground parking. Because on my little car, I know how tall it is. But sometimes when you drive for a long way and you have four surfboards stacked on the roof, you forget there's surfboards stacked on the roof. And then you go to a mall and you park in underground parking. And then you drive in and you hear, and you're like, damn, I have four surfboards on my roof. And then you're like, what do I do? Because the surfboards are stuck. What do you think you do? Well, then you're just going to damage your surfboards more. They're already stuck, Noah. Take them off your roof. They're stuck, Noah. The ceiling is pushing on them. 
What did I do? Leave your car there. Leave my car there. <laughs> in the mall. Blocking the entrance to the parkade. Wrong. What did I do? What? That is exactly what I did. I flattened my tires. <laughs> Let all the air out of the tires. Sinks down enough. Back up 10 feet. Pump your tires back up. Well done. Nobody gets that. Magnus. The roof was okay, yes. Which? The roof of my car, the surfboards, or the ceiling of the parkade? Which one are you caring about here? Think carefully before you answer. All right, so of course, will this guy fit under the bridge? This is another question of which do I convert? Do I have to convert both of them? Do I? No, as long as I convert one of them, I'm going to be okay, yeah? So if I convert 3.5 meters to feet, or I convert 11 feet 9 inches to meters, either way I'm going to be okay, right? So which one should I do? I personally, am I going to go, I'm going to go 3.5 meters to feet, 1 foot over 0 0.3048. So I do 3.5 divided by 0 0.3048. And that gets me 3.5 divided by 0 0.3048 is 11.48 inches, or 11.48 feet. That's how tall the bridge is, or how tall my truck is. How tall is the bridge? 11. 11 feet and 9 inches, yeah? Is 9 inches a decimal? Is it 11.9? No. No. It's 11 and 9 twelfths, yes? Which is 11.75, yes? Do I still fit? No. My truck's 11.48. The bridge is 11.75. Do I fit? Do you risk it? You risk it? Nice. Then when I get stuck behind you on the highway, I, I'll be the one that gets out flat in his tires. But of course, he fits. Everybody good? Okay. And then the rest of these, you can just try to convert yourself. Uh, yeah. And that's it. You guys are going to work on that now. I am going to give you some textbook work. Page 25, 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. And I'm going to give you two sheets. I haven't handed them out yet. I'm going to give them out right now. And I'm going to give you half an hour to do all that. We're going to quiz on this stuff on Thursday. Okay? So tomorrow you'll see all the right answers to the two sheets. You'll see the right answers to the rest of these notes. And, of course, the textbook has the answers in the back. So double-check your work. Everybody cool? Now, if you don't have your textbook, because you came here without it, you're going to have these sheets and two more worksheets to do. So work on them. You don't need to go get your textbook unless you finish all the worksheets. All right? Everybody good? Okay. Okay.